What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 10 video. Now you might be thinking, Margos, didn't you already do a Series 10 tier list for restricted Pokemon? This is true. However, I did that about a month ago when the series first got revealed. And what I want to do now is reflect on what the series has brought us in terms of the testing we've done prior to the series actually being official in about three days uh, and after having just tested out so many different Pokemon. And I'll give my thoughts on this and just have sort of an updated tier list. So consider this a revisiting of the tiers. Before we get into that, if you guys enjoy this and in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And answer my comment question of the day. Which Pokemon do you think that was bottom tier at the beginning of the season have people changed their mind on the most? Let me know. And let's go ahead and get started. So, this tier list will be done in a way where Pokemon are tiered based on their viability as a restricted on their own. And I feel like this series in particular makes it easier to rate Pokemon this way purely because we only get one. Some previous formats in like 2019, Pokemon were viable because of their partners, where in this one, they're on their own. Like, you have non-restricted partners, but they're on their own this time, so it's it's pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and get started. So, um, am I ready? Yeah, I got my I got my Dr. Pepper on deck. I got gum in my mouth. It's minty. If I drink the Dr. Pepper while I'm chewing on the gum, the back of my eyes burn. I just went for my run. I'm ready. I'm in the right mindset to rate Pokemon. <laughs> Anyways, um, I guess these are ordered in, in, like, release order, you know. So... First up is Mewtwo. Mewtwo, I will say, I have used it. I think it's awful. <laughs> I think it's awful. It's basically frailer. No, it's not frailer. I think it's slightly bulkier. It's bulkier, slower coverage Calyrex is the best way to put it. You'd be hard pressed to find a reason to use Mewtwo other than you want to be able to focus Blast and Incineroar and fail to knock it out. In the grand scheme of things, I would put Mewtwo... I want to put it D, but I think it's like, you can get away with it. It's it's like C. If you're not facing off against Calyrex itself, you're doing fine. It's going to work. It's not awful. You can, you can get away with it. That being said, it's very hard to rate Restricteds lower than C. So we're starting off real strong here. <laughs> Lugia, I'm going to go ahead and put it at a D. Lugia is just, it doesn't do anything the best is the thing. Lugia excels at Dynamax formats and even then I wouldn't call it excelling it just it's its move pool and its stats are best in a Dynamax format but since we can't Dynamax it weakness policy isn't quite as viable and it definitely does not like the existence of Incineroar all over the format Snarl is really really bad for it and it just doesn't hit hard enough like it's it's a very bulky mon it's meant to take hits it isn't meant to really dish him out let me go ahead and open up Pokemon Showdown here so I can show you guys um, just the stats on this thing real quick. Here we go. Yeah. So let's, let's look at Lugia. So if we look at Lugia, it's like super bulky, right? 106 HP, 130 defense, 154 special defense. This thing can eat so many hits and especially with multi-scale, it can, it, it's never getting one shot. There's nothing in this game that would one shot it without setting up for like two turns prior. But with 90 on both offenses, the only way you're going to get away with this thing is really just by running a weakness policy. And I have seen people run like, I don't know, like, uh, let's say you have like Fling Raichu, right? And you're running like the the Salak Berry. And you hit it with a dark move, a low power dark move. It gets plus one speed. It gets plus two special attack. Then you can do something. But it's so obvious on preview when you see Raichu plus Lugia. It's so linear that it isn't viable. And while other Pokemon like Xerneas are very linear in how you play them, you can't, the reward is much better for how linear it is, you know? So Lugia is gonna go to D tier. Now, I have been someone who has spoken praises of Ho-Oh recently. And as the format progressed, I am slowly losing faith in Ho-Oh and I think a lot of people are. The thing with Ho-Oh is it's sort of like, for the value of it, it has good matchups versus very prominent Pokemon. It has a good matchup versus Calyrex, Shadow Rider, Xerneas, and Zacian, which are top tier Pokemon. However, 
The fact that it takes a restricted slot is very difficult to justify in a lot of cases. So because of that, I'm actually somewhat tempted to put Ho-Oh lower than I would have otherwise. It's definitely not C tier, that was an accident. It's definitely not C tier, but it's a very solid B tier. I, I would say high B tier. Before, I would actually put it at A tier. I was actually a very big fan of Hoa. Um, but the thing is, Entei has the same tools as it. It's faster, it can't be intimidated. It can deal with Zacian. It can take a hit from Xerneas. It can do all that. Not as well, but well enough where you can't really justify using ho -Oh as you're restricted in a lot of cases. You can still build around it. It still does just fine. I still think that ho -Oh Rillaboom Swampert is like a really nice comp, but I don't think it's as valuable as it was at the beginning of the format. Especially with Landorus rising in usage, this thing gets outsped and gets one shot by Rock Slides because of Sheer Force and Life Orb. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of it right now. I think it's fine. I think B tier is exactly where it deserves to be. Kyogre is an S tier. I'm going to be putting a lot of Pokemon in S tier, and that's because A tier is going to be reserved for... It's going to be reserved for Pokemon that... Mm, no, I'm going to put A tier. I think there's still only two S tiers in this format, now that I think about it. Uh, I think Kyogre's A tier. I, I would put it in S tier because of how reliable it is, but I will say that it's very easy to counterplay. Uh, and that is if you're prepared for it and you know that Tsarina exists. Many people will opt for Rillaboom as an answer to Kyogre on their own team. However, Kyogres have started teching on Tsarina as a way to check the priority Grassy Glide. That being said, it's still not too difficult to beat Kyogre because it wants to click Water Spout, it wants to click Origin Pulse. Scald is very good. The fact of the matter is, you know exactly what a Kyogre team's gonna do. It's gonna go with Tornadus, it's gonna go with Kyogre. They're gonna go for the Tailwind, they're gonna use Scarf Water Spout or even Mystic Water Water Spout. They're gonna have a Zarina in the back, and they're gonna try to beat your Rillaboom. As soon as Zarina's gone, as soon as you know that you live a hurricane from the from the Tornadus. It's not hard to get rid of Kyogre, and once the Kyogre itself is gone, Kyogre comps kind of fall apart. There are other compositions that have a lot of powerful Pokemon on them that allow for you to make a comeback even when your Restricted's gone. Your Restricted's very valuable, right? However, in the case of like Eveltal, Eveltal has a stack attack on many builds. When Eveltal goes down, the stack attack is arguably just as threatening as the Eveltal was, sometimes even more so if you have Trick Room up. Kyogre teams don't have this quality. Rillaboom's a really strong Pokemon, Tornadus is a really strong Pokemon, but they aren't nearly as valuable to the, uh, to the team as the Kyogre is. Once the Kyogre is gone, everything falls apart, especially if you still have your Restricted on the field. It's very difficult to beat. When, it's, it's very difficult for a Kyogre team to beat other Restricted teams once Kyogre's down. It's just too important. So yeah, I think A tier is exactly where it belongs. I almost put it S tier, but I think it, I, I can't really justify that. I'm going to put uh, Groudon at B tier. We have seen some Sun teams make a comeback. Venusaur is still a magnificent, it's still a magnificent partner for Groudon. Um, even though, you know, it's not having like G-Max at its side. Uh, we still see some Charizard occasionally. It's not the best, right? Uh, however, just Groudon is fine. It's always going to be fine. Sun offense is always going to be just fine. I have seen some people try to make use of Cherim, but I don't think that's ever going to be great. The value from Groudon pretty much comes from Life Orb, Prespice Blades, uh, and the fact that, you know, you can threaten like a Defiant Pokemon next to it. it it's just it's just a lot of damage output and a lot of pressure on the team from Venusaur. So yeah, honestly, like I haven't seen too much Groudon, but I have seen enough and I have lost to it enough times where I know that it's a legitimate threat, but I put it in the same tier as Ho-Oh, specifically because it's not quite as oppressive as other Pokemon. And I don't think that Groudon brings as much value to the table as a lot of other restricted. So I'm just gonna have to shove it in B tier. It does have a pretty decent Zacian matchup though, because of the physical bulk. So that's all right. Uh, but still Groudon, can't knock out an Incineroar at minus one on many builds. They have to run like Life Orb for a chance to do that with Prespice Blades, but you know, it, it still doesn't like Intimidate Spam, which is understandable. I'm actually a pretty big fan of White Herb on Groudon. Rayquaza, you're, D or you're, you're C tier, man. Like, uh, it, it'll it'll work. Meteor Beam is still fine if you have speed control and stuff. I think Rayquaza definitely benefits from a lot of teams being heavy on like support Pokemon. Like Incineroar is something that you're gonna see a lot, right? Rillaboom is saying that you're going to see a lot. And Rayquaza has a pretty positive matchup versus both of those with with like Meteor Beam, Hurricane, Dragon Ascent. 
but it's just not that valuable. It's just not that great. Uh, it definitely doesn't like facing off against a lot of the top tiers. While it can turn off weather for Kyogre, it can't take an Ice Beam, and a lot of Kyogres are bulky enough where they can take a Dragon Ascent or something. Especially if it's running the special set, you can eat a hit from that with Kyogre. Uh, Xerneas absolutely destroys Rayquaza, Outsped destroyed, and Zacian absolutely destroys Rayquaza. Just no chance. It doesn't even need to run Play Rough to beat it. Like, Behemoth Blade is more than enough. So yeah, Rayquaza, C tier, in my opinion. I actually think that Dialga, could, you could make a case for B tier with this guy, but I can't help but feel that it belongs in C tier. And that's mainly because of how how big it is, like, as, how do I say it? It's, it's a big Snarl target. Snarl is very prominent in the format. There's a lot of, like, debuffs going around. You want to go ahead and Snarl opposing special attackers, and Dialga is no exception to that. We also see a lot of very pow powerful fire types in the format. And while Volcarona and Incineroar get hit neutrally for dragon moves, and this can tech like a ground move onto it, more often than not, it just kind of gets walled out. It gets parting shotted, it gets snarled, it gets struggle bugged. Volcarona, it does like nothing to after like a struggle bug. Like it isn't great. And even though Steel is very powerful and can hit a lot of things for some pretty decent damage, it doesn't like taking hits from like close combat Zacian. Plus two Moonblast still does chunks because it's neutral against this thing. Very hard to get the value you need out of it. Palkia on the other hand, pretty interesting. A lot of people have been using Palkia because of just how good of an offensive Pokemon it is. You do have to land Hydro Pump. That sucks. I'm going to put that out there. Landing Hydro Pump sucks. Um, but because Zacian doesn't run play rough like it actually has a pretty decent matchup like you do a decent amount of damage to Zacian with your stabs and if you want to run like I don't know earth power flamethrower does it get earth power I feel like it gets earth power I know it gets flamethrower even though it's like a water type yeah it gets flamethrower but like earth power yeah if you want to run that like you still do decent damage and like it's got good offenses 150 special attack is really nice it outspeeds the other restricteds and it's super bulky, 90 HP, 100, 120, it takes hits. Like your biggest fear is Sacred Sword from Zacian, so. Yeah, it also has a great matchup versus Kyogre, you wall that thing out. Xerneas is like the only issue with it, but you know how you fix your Xerneas matchup? You know how you fix your Xerneas matchup? Right here. Bam, Xerneas matchup. <laughs> yeah, and on top of that, it's actually really great versus Incineroar because while other Pokemon that like our special attackers actually somewhat fear Incineroar. Palkia's high special attack stat, combo with the fact that you can just run like, you know, Lustrous Orb and Hydro Pump means that like Incineroar just does not have a good time versus it. You're going to take a lot of damage because of Lustrous Orb, you know, you get that water boost. It's it's so strong. I think that it's one of the most underrated Pokemon at the beginning of the format that has risen so much in a lot of people's minds. So, yeah. Uh, both of you guys... <laughs> Dude, if I'm going to use a Ghost Dragon type, it's going to be freaking Dragapult. Let me explain why... Let me explain why Giratina is so disappointing. Both forms at that. If I were to run a Giratina form, I would want it to be this form, but I don't want to run this garbage item. Like, yeah, it hits hard, but it's 120 special attack. If I could run a Life Orb on this thing, I would. Because let me tell you something. It's not Dynamax format. We have to run like a decent ghost move. And while Phantom Force would be nice in Dynamax format because you can max it, we're stuck running Poltergeist and a lot of Pokemon consume their items before they're able, or before this thing is gonna like hit it. Like you're gonna hit a Rillaboom with Poltergeist and it's gonna do damage. Xerneas, if you wanna hit the Xerneas, <laughs> for one, you're dying to Xerneas regardless, but they can literally Geomancy in front of you. And then if you're running like Poltergeist, Dragon Claw, both of your moves don't hit it because the power of goes off, so that sucks. Zacian has a just a field day against this thing, unless you're running like the, the other version because it's kind of bulky. You know, actually it's very bulky. It is very, very bulky. But the best thing you can do versus it is like this. Like this is the best set you're gonna get out of this of, of this version. It's so bad. Does it get roost this gen? It doesn't get roost this gen. No. Like it doesn't get like any kind of like recovery. Um it's just bad. Like I can't. It's it's sort of like it has Lugia syndrome where it doesn't hit hard enough. Like it, it's not as bulky, but it still doesn't hit hard enough. Like it hits slightly harder with 100, 100. And if you want to run the offensive version, it still doesn't hit hard enough because you're stuck using this garbage item and you're still 
you can't use Phantom Force because it's not viable. It gets snarled by Incineroar. It doesn't even come close to KOing Incineroar. If I could run like choice specs on this thing, maybe we'd be talking. Maybe, because then I could like drop Draco Meteors, but I, I can't explain how bad Giratina is this format. Snarl, Caloric Shadow Rider, Zacian itself, Xerneas, like everything is against it, even Eveltal. If this thing goes up against an Eveltal that's like running Assault Vest, it's completely over. So yeah, F tier for both of these guys. I'm sorry. Like I almost want to put this guy with you so you're not so lonely, but mm, I'm sorry, bro. Now, um, I will say Reshiram is one of the few I haven't experimented with. Reshiram is pretty interesting. I also haven't seen a lot of Reshiram. I think I've maybe faced it once. And the comp that I saw was like Reshiram plus Torkoal. It is definitely really nice for the Zacian matchup. And it's pretty okay for the um, for the Xerneas matchup because it has higher special defense than physical defense. So it, it can take a hit, right? It, it's neutral on fairy moves. However, I think this is going to be another one of those dragons that's carried by like a stack attack on the back. I think Reshiram stack attack is fine, but then you're vulnerable to one of the biggest threats in the format right now being Landorus Incarnate, because you just get one shot. <laughs> you just get one shot by this thing. It does way too much damage, and that's nothing to be ashamed of. Like most things get one shot by Landorus Incarnate. Um, but on top of that, it definitely, like it can, it can take the hit, right? But it wouldn't appreciate taking hits from Urshifu Rapid Strike, which is very common in the format right now. It's also just Snarl food for Incineroar. And while it does have a really nice matchup versus a few Restricteds, the partners that come with those Restricteds just shut it down before it can do much. So I'm gonna have to put it at, I wanna put it at like C tier with the rest of these guys, I think. Like, I, I think C tier is fine for him. Kurum is actually, not Kurum, um, Zekrom. Zekrom is another interesting case. The fact that it bypasses uh, Lightning Rod is actually really nice for the Kyogre matchup, on top of the fact that you resist uh, water moves. You don't resist ice moves, obviously. However, you do get shut down pretty hard by um, by Xerneas. You do have a pretty decent matchup versus Zacian, however, you're not hitting it quite as hard as you need to. I would say that Zekrom... I want to put Zekrom in, in C tier. We haven't seen much of it, and it's Intimidate Food too. So yeah, I, I want to put it there. I think C tier is fine for it. You can get away with it. It's going to be another one of those you can get away with it situations. I think maybe like Zekrom Tornadus or some form of speed control is the best you can do with it. Maybe if you run like White Herb and I think it gets Dragon Dance. Yeah, maybe if you run like White Herb Dragon Dance, you could do something with it. But then you'd have to run, you know, Bolt Strike, which isn't completely accurate. And you want to run Dragon Claw, which isn't the best. And then you want to run a ground move, which your options are limited. You have to run a special set if you want to run a ground move. Like, there isn't much that it can do. As far as beating Zacian, it has almost no chance of doing that. You need to get, like, plus two on your Bolt Strike to KO that thing, because how bulky it is. So, yeah. I think C tier is fine. It's another... Like, C tier is the, the tier of, you can get away with it. B tier is the tier of, you can get away with it, and you'll probably do pretty good. A tier is, you're doing great with this, and S tier is, like, you know it's good. You knew it was good when you put it in the team builder. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... I think that Kurum White and Kurum Black have some potential. I'm going to go ahead and clear out the Steam Builder. Because I, I need to think about them for a minute. There are certain Pokemon on this tier list that like I just have not seen. Um, so yeah. Let me take a look at these guys real quick. Obviously Ice-type is not doing them many favors. Offensively, it hits like nothing very much. Like, what is it? Like Kyogre resists, Zacian resists, uh, Xerneas doesn't mind it. Caloric Shadow doesn't mind it. There isn't much that they do. Obviously, the physical attack in this thing is absolutely absurd. This is another situation of, like, maybe a wider Dragon Dance set. It's going to be another one of those situations. And it's it's fine, you know, you can get away with it. I think they're both going to be C tier as well. Maybe you can make a case for Kurum White ending up in B tier with the rest of these guys, but we just haven't seen it get results. And once again, it's still outsped by Xerneas. If it were like five points faster if it hit base 100 i'd feel much more comfortable putting it in in b tier but the the fact of the matter is once again while it does hit pretty hard it's still snarl food and this thing while it does hit pretty hard it's still intimidate food we have a certain pokemon here that can do both of those so i don't know it's just it's very hard to put the gen 5 legendaries any higher than that
And these aren't ordered within the tiers, obviously, but yeah, uh, you're in F tier. You're not even, you're not even done yet. You're not done yet. <laughs> While we're at it, like, you know, these guys aren't done. You know, I'm going to put you, <laughs> Kiram's getting in the back. <laughs> He's not done yet. He still needs a couple more, a couple more minutes in the oven, you know? All right. And here's our first S tier. Here's the thing with, with, with Xerneas. Xerneas has a very established comp that you can run with it. That is very good. You know, you run the, you run the Xerneas, you run the Volcarona. Volcarona being discovered to be good is really cool. Uh, you run Urshifu Rapid Strike, not that one. You run Urshifu Rapid Strike, you run the Rillaboom, you run the, the Regieleki, you know, you, you have, there's a lot of things going for it, right? And, and you can, of course, run Incineroar as well. I don't know if this is the most common build for this. Like, this is just, these are just common partners you see with it. Xerneas is fine. <laughs> it, it just, it's so good. Um, the partners that you pair with it are what make it so viable. The fact that it can run Incineroar and Volcarona at the same time comfortably makes it much easier for it to take on Zacian. And a lot of people thought that Zacian is like the ultimate Xerneas check, and to an extent it is. I was very excited when we saw Zacian in the game because I'm like, cool, restricted formats, not dominated by, Z by uh, Xerneas. But they still are. But Zacian is too. It's like, you're, it's like you, you haven't been saved, you're just under new management, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I think that Xerneas is really nice, mainly because of the compositions we've seen it ran on. Uh, the fact that it has a positive matchup versus the majority of the metagame is huge. I would say it has a, it's, it's got like an even matchup with Kyogre, and then as soon as you get the Geomancy off, it's positive, if that makes sense. It has a positive matchup versus you, 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 like it, it's, it's positive versus the majority of the metagame. And a lot of Pokemon have to tech on these steel types in order to deal with it. If you wanna if you wanna deal with Xerneas, you better have a steel type. And there's only a few that are actually somewhat viable in the format. Obviously, like what comes to mind is gonna be like stack attack. Uh, I have seen one or two Kartana. I have seen a lot of Ferrothorn recently for some reason, even though I don't think it's the best. Celesteel is a great check to it. Aegislash is rising in usage, even though I think it's the I don't think it's the best check to Xerneas. I do consider it a check. So yeah, I think that. The fact that you have to have a steal to make sure you don't auto lose to Xerneas is really big. Incineroar having to run like a set particularly crafted to live a plus two Tim and Boomblast is absolutely huge. The fact that a lot of people are running like Safety Goggles Roar, Safety Goggles Snarl is just a testament as to how dominating this thing is. So yeah, uh, Xerneas S tier, very easy pick. I would actually put Evoltal at B tier. Now, oh, I just completely reset that. There we go. I'll put Evoltal at B tier. Why is Evoltal B tier? Originally, I would have put it at C tier. I actually didn't like it much this gen, but I have opened my eyes to the power of Eveltal. I think that Eveltal is a Pokemon that relies on its partners to be viable. And once you have a proper composition for it, it's pretty good. And once again, it's going to be Eveltal stack attack. If you're weak to Xerneas and you have a stack attack next to you, that matchup becomes much more difficult for the Xerneas player because they have other priorities other than one-shotting your, your um, main Pokemon. And I think Eveltal is just nice in general. Um, it's able to, while it isn't able to like one-shot Zacian, it can deal a significant amount of damage with Dark Aura Foul Play. It's another great snarling Pokemon. It has a positive matchup versus uh, both Kyogre and Calyrex Shadow. Uh, it can go ahead and run like an Assault Vest, and that also allows it to run Oblivion Wing pretty reliably, which allows it to beat Rillaboom and gain so much health back from it. And you can even just run Sucker Punch if you really wanted to. I don't think Sucker Punch is like my number one choice for this set because you have to run like Mixed at that point, but it's still a good move. Like there's a lot of things that this thing can do. You could even like run Heat Wave if you really don't want to like get stuck in with like Gothitalization because you can definitely, you can, this thing's bulky. You can live a hit from Zacian. You can live one Behemoth Blade at plus one and then you can just U-turn on it because the Gothitelle is probably going to protect. So yeah, like that's an option you have with it. I think it's another Pokemon that is completely viable only because of its partners. But once you have the right partners, it's actually just super, super nice. Yeah, I, I think it's justifiable in B tier, possible low A tier, but it's definitely like high B tier. Um, Dang it, why do I keep accidentally like right clicking? This is a brand new mouse, by the way. You, uh, you're F tier, you're not done yet. Zygarde is a very disappointing one for me. Honestly, I think Zygarde is pretty disappointing. Um. It doesn't beat Xerneas. It doesn't have another Pokemon next to it that it can run. It doesn't have another restricted next to it that it can run that would make it viable like in previous formats. It does love Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini is great. The Misty Seed set is great. But it just doesn't do that great in this format. It's Intimidate food. It's Fairy food. 
it, Zacian can live a hit from it pretty easily if it like if it's at neutral because you have to run most of your EVs in like bulk and stuff. Zygarde complete is an option, right? It is something that you can run on this thing, but and I am treating this as Zygarde complete because that's the only one that matters. It's got to be like the highest possible D tier, in my opinion. You can coil, you can do whatever you want, but you know what's picking up in usage? Haze is picking up in usage. Clear Smog Amoongus is picking up in usage. You get absolutely walled out by by like Leech Seed Celesteela. It's like not fun. It's very setup reliant. It has a lot of trouble going. And unlike other setup Pokemon, like the Curum forms, like, like Zekrom, you can't just Dragon Dance once. You can't just Meteor Beam once. You have to coil a good amount of times before you're viable. And you need, you need recovery. You absolutely need recovery, so... Yeah, Zygarde, it's it's gonna be like the highest of B tiers in, in my opinion. I'm gonna go ahead and put Solgaleo in B tier. I have seen a decent amount of Solgaleo. Um, I think that Solgaleo is fine. I, I think it's like, it's either the highest C tier or the lowest B tier right now. The reason being is it doesn't actually mind the Incineroar matchup too well, mainly because of Clear Body. Clear Body is absolutely phenomenal. It has a great matchup versus uh, Xerneas. It has Wide Guard to beat Kyogre if you really wanted to. It has a lot of value that it can bring to the table. Uh, and it actually doesn't do terribly against Zacian. It has a lot of really cool coverage moves that you can run. I, I think that Assault Vest or like any kind of bulky set is probably going to be the, the way that you want to run it. If we look at Solgaleo, right? The amount of moves it gets that are just so so good wild charge is like at the bottom of my list of good moves it's like just barely mentionable it, it gets a lot of stuff does it get close combat it does get close combat that's shin that's so cool it doesn't have to run superpower anymore so here's the thing right so galio just has a field day against xerneas teams and that's because if you look at the average xerneas team what's their answer to you it's going to be volcarona and if they don't have it it's going to be Incineroar. Incineroar gets CC'd off a 137 base attack. You could life orb this thing and it'd still be good. <laughs> um, and you can't get intimidated. You can't get your speed dropped. It's just so nice. Like I said, it gets access to wide guard, which is a very solid move. It could even run Trick Room if it really felt like it. I have seen one or two Trick Room Solgaleo in my entire life. I don't think it's the best set, but I think it works for just scaring off the opponent um, from like doing anything too scary. But yeah. I think it's a great Pokemon. I think it works. It's going to be another one of those. You can get away with it, but it's a lot easier to get away with it than like these guys. I think it's nice. It's mainly just the positive matchup versus... I wouldn't say it's a positive matchup versus Zacian. I think it's neutral. I think Zacian has a lot of partners that could mess with this guy. Um, but given the proper speed control, etc. Intimidate cycling, like Incineroar plus Solgaleo just seems nice. Uh, Lando Solgaleo actually wouldn't be awful either if you're running like... Regieleki next to it. So I can see like Regieleki, Lando, Sogalio being somewhat decent. Yeah, uh, it's definitely fearful of like foul play Pokemon. Uh, it definitely doesn't enjoy the Eveltal matchup. It doesn't enjoy the Calyrex Shadow matchup. But if you're running like Snarl, Incineroar, once again, it's another Pokemon viable because of Incineroar next to it. It's going to be fine. Lunala. I'm going to have to put Lunala C tier. I don't know why I'm putting it in front of this guy. It'd be at like the top of C tier, honestly. Lunala is interesting in that you would think Calyrex Shadow Rider outright outclasses it. And it does. It does. But you'd be hard pressed to find a Luna or hard pressed to find a Calyrex Shadow Rider running Trick Room. Lunala fits into one of those weird situations where it's a fast Pokemon that you want to run with some speed investment. That you're still gonna run Trick Room on because reversing the speed tiers for this thing is actually really nice. You could run like a cheeky psych up against Xerneas teams. You can run Psy Shock to deal major damage against um, Kyogre teams. Expanding Force still does chunks to things, even though you don't hit quite as hard as Calyrex Shadow does. And Calyrex Shadow hits pretty hard. We'll be talking about that in a minute. Uh, and you also don't hit as hard as Mewtwo, but it's mainly just the bulk on it, the Trick Room option, the Shadow Shield ability, the Fake Out immunity. It's that that makes it somewhat okay. But it's Snarl Food. It is Snarl food. Meteor Beam Power Herb is also pretty cool. I have seen that a few times. But yeah, I, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think it's going to be top of C tier. Maybe bottom of B tier. I don't know. But yeah, uh, Dulcimane to Krasma, that's, that's B tier to me. I, I, I can't think of a reason to make it C tier. And a lot of people are probably wondering, what do you mean? It's Incineroar food. 
just build better. <laughs> just build better. Like I have a, a Necrozma Dust Main team that's been doing work for me. But Necrozma Dust Main, you can build a set that just without an Assault Vest, without any special defense boost, can tank a Calyrex Shadow, Life Orb, Timid Max Special Attack, Astral Barrage, which allows you to set up a Trick Room. And from that point on, your opponent's on the defense. While you could run weakness policy on this thing, and it is one of the few really good weakness policy users in this format, I would say Mental Herb is probably the best option, mainly because it allows you to get that Trick Room off so much easier. And while you are Incineroar food, you can run moves that could be the Incineroar. You could run Earthquake or Earth Power on like a mix set, but personally, I'm a big fan of Swords Dance. I think Swords Dancing under Trick Room is so, so gross. A lot of Incineroars will switch in and out. If you sw if an Incineroar switches in on you and you get off a of Swords Dance and you have like Psychic Terrain up, it's difficult for them to choose what to do. They know for a fact that they're not going to be able to KO you the Flare Blitz because of how physically bulky this is, because of prim Prism Armor decreasing super effective attacks. There's a lot going for it. Obviously, I think the only two moves that you really want to run are going to be like Photon Geyser and Sunsteel Strike. But if you want to drop Swords Dance for like something else, I would probably run like Rock Coverage. Like Stone Edge is nice for beating Incineroar, so yeah. Uh, that would only be like on a weakness policy set in my opinion though. Stone Edge is probably trash if you're not running that. So yeah, uh, I think Necrozma Dust Main has a lot going for it. It has a positive matchup versus Zacian because Zacian just, it can't deal that much damage to it. It has a positive matchup versus uh, Xerneas. It has a pretty neutral matchup versus Kyogre. Um, I'd say the worst matchup it has is Calyrex Shadow Rider. And once again, if you properly prep for that, if you have an Incineroar, if you have some Snarl Pokemon, if you have just some kind of defensive switch and you get the Trick Room off, it becomes so much easier for this thing to just do what it needs to do. So yeah, I think it's fine. You, uh, you're... I want to put you C tier, but... I feel like D tier is probably where you belong. I'm not sure. I want to put a D tier mainly because while Lunala is like fast and can do stuff, if we look at Necrozma Dawn or Dust, what am I saying? Dawn Wings. It does still have Prism Armor. It is still specially bulky, but it's probably still getting one shot by Calyrex Shadow Rider, <laughs> even though it has Prism Armor. Even though this thing's like you know not as specially bulky as the Lunala or as the as the Necrozma Dawn Wings is, it's it's not times for a week to Ghost moves. And like, what is this thing gonna do? Like, realistically, what are you going to do? You can't fake out the Calyrex Shadow. You can't... You have to, like, wide guard on the turn that you go for your move. And, like, even then, like, I, I guess you would just run, like, Power Herb Meteor Beam. Like, Power Herb Meteor Beam, right? Power Herb Meteor Beam. Uh, maybe, like, Expanding Force. Uh, you definitely want Moon Geist Beam. That's definitely something you want to run. It's it's fine. It's not great. I, I, I think it, it's D tier. I think it's much harder to get away with running this thing. In the format than it is to <laughs> to get away with these guys funny enough you're not done yet you're an f tier it's just not a finished pokemon it's another one of those cases where it's like regular necrozma you can tell it was meant to be fused it was it was never that great it's got the stats of like not even a legendary pokemon what is its base stat total yeah it's got 600 base stat total so that is like legendary stats but that's like Dude, like, stack attack is just better than this thing. Even though they do different things, with less stats overall, stack attack is still much better. That's because it's so middling on everything. 127 special attacks high, don't get me wrong. 79 speed, right in the middle. The defenses are... It's it's right in the middle. I guess you could run, like, cosmic power, stored power, weakness policy shenanigans, but, like, that's the best you're going to do. It's not great. It's not finished. Zacian's another S tier. Sub Swords Dance, Close Combat, um, Close Combat, Behemoth Blade, that's all it needs. Regieleki next to it's absolutely absurd. Rillaboom, Incineroar, the standard stuff, it's it's absurd. This guy, he's not done. But I would hazard to say that you could probably put him in like C tier. Honestly, like it's still fast, it still hits hard, it still outspeeds everything. If you were to run the base form Zacian, you could get away with it. Like, look at this. You get plus one on your plus one. You can't tell me that isn't scary. You're not hitting as hard as the other Zacian. You're not as strong as the other Zacian, but it's still, it's still like fine. Um, this guy is another one you can get away with. It's too bulky. It doesn't hit hard enough. 
I made an entire video explaining on the issues of it. I'll put I'll probably put a card up top if you want to look at that. Zamazenta Crown just isn't that good. I would hazard to say that the Zamazenta is better, but only marginally. Um, Zamazenta is just like another one of those cases where it'd be better in a double restricted format. If you're running Zamazenta, you're going to be clicking like Wide Guard. You're going to be clicking Snarl. You're going to close combat Steel types, but that's it. That's all it's doing. It doesn't beat other restricteds. Um, it doesn't deal enough damage to be considered worthy of a restricted slot, in my opinion. 130 isn't that isn't that great, especially when you're Intimidate Food and the best you got going for you is Work Up. Like, if this thing got Swords Dance, maybe you could make a case for it, but unfortunately there is no Shields Dance in this game. There's just like Iron Defense, so yeah. This guy, Pleasant Surprise, B tier. Eternatus is one of my favorite legendary Pokemon of all time. I love it. You can run so many sets on it, and it dismantles the standard cores of the format. While this thing has a neutral matchup at best with many other restricteds, it's got neutral versus Kyogre, Zacian, and Xerneas in my opinion. It destroys at minimum like three Pokemon on all their teams. Uh, Rillaboom, Annihilated. Incineroar, Annihilated by Meteor Beam if you're running that, or just slow sludge bomb stuff. Um, Urshifu. Annihilated by just stab sludge bomb. It, it doesn't take it. Regieleki deals no damage to it, gets annihilated back because of its low defenses. This thing is so good in either like an offensive case or even with like pressure stall stuff. Like Eternatus can run not that form. If we had that form, that'd be like the top tier Pokemon. Uh Eternatus, regular form. It can literally just run Black Sludge, Pressure, Cosmic Power, Sludge Bomb recover flamethrower and it's fine that's all it needs that's seriously all it needs and you run like a bulky set you can do whatever you want with like the stats or you could run like a, a fast offensive set and this is like an early metagame team that i made um probably doesn't hold up as well now that we've been playing for a while but you could run like a bulky power up set it still annihilates most pokemon on the team that are not restricted so yeah like it has a lot going for it pressure stall is also absurd because you get rid of a, a lot of like signature moves. Like let's say you're facing off against like, um, against like Zacian Crown, right? So Zacian, I don't know whose team this is. Uh, Zacian Crown, Behemoth Blade. Like most signature moves cap out at like eight PP, right? So if there's eight PP, if they use it like four times in front of your, in front of your bulky Eternatus, it's gone. It's gone because of pressure. So that's, that's really nice. There's a lot of value you can do with it. You kind of have to build your team to be like pressure stall Eternatus, cent uh, pressure stall Eternatus centralized. Like you have to build it specifically for that, but it still works. And it actually is like a solid comp to play. It almost feels like restricted chancy, if that makes sense. So I enjoy it. This one's going to be another solid B tier, in my opinion. I think that, um, I think Calyrex Ice is actually really nice. Oh, we've seen a lot of Oranguru Calyrex Ice for the teams that it's running. And I think that that makes sense, right? White Herb Calyrex Ice, Trick Room Up, Glacial Lance. I've always made the joke that Glacial Lance is a, or res resisting Glacial Lance is a myth. It hits so hard. It's such a powerful typing. Ice is such a strong, powerful typing. 165 base attack, low speed. The fact that it can also like go for a Swords Dance. I'm 90% sure it gets Swords Dance. I might be wrong. Let me double check. I don't want to sound stupid. Yeah, it also gets Swords Dance. I have faced Swords Dance. I've also faced Brutal Swing Weakness Policy, which is kind of scary. I think it's a solid B tier. I think it's great. Uh, Calyrex Shadow. I'm going to put it A tier. I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's S tier. And that's mainly because of how Snarl weak it is. Yes, Mian Shao Adaptation to help beat Incineroar did help it out quite a bit. But like, it's still just, it's still like so predictable. It, it's very linear. It's very linear. As soon as the Mian is gone, if you have some alternative way to stuff the Calyrex lead, if you have some other Pokemon that isn't Incineroar uh, that can stuff the Calyrex on lead, and then you just remove the Mian Shao, very simple, mind you, they have to fake something out turn one, or they have to wide guard to block the Snarl. Once that thing's gone, the rest of the team is literally Snarl food. Like it's very hard to find something on a team that wants to take the Snarl, because it's usually Tapu Lele or Ndidi next to it. Calyrex Shadow is your restricted. Sometimes they'll run their own Incineroar. And that thing isn't exactly the biggest offensive threat. They very rarely run their own terrain or run run separate terrain Pokemon. So you're not going to see a Rillaboom on there. 
Uh, and I've seen a lot of Whimscat on there as well. So all those Pokemon, Snarl food. With like a Xerneas, if you have like an Incineroar next to it, you could lead off Xerneas Incineroar. And versus Mianxiao plus Calyrex, if you have like a Rillaboom in the back, you just double out your Incineroar for the Rillaboom, get your terrain up, because the Mianxiao would switch out first, or at the very least the um, the terrain that comes up will go after the Rillaboom switch. You're going to get your terrain up, and then like Expanding Force does nothing. Um, Astrobrow still does a decent amount of damage, but you know, you get your Geomancy off, you'll be fine, you'll outspeed everything. You're going to live at least one, right, with Xerneas. It, it's not that hard. Zacian is another matchup versus this thing that it's it seems like it's not that great because it gets outsped and it takes a decent amount of damage from Master Barrage, but it's still Zacian. Zacian can still tank hits. Zacian loves having bulky partners next to it. Zacian loves Rillaboom for getting your terrain up. Zacian loves Incineroar for snarling this thing. It's not that bad. That being said, I'm just talking about Pokemon that do well versus it. This thing deals so much damage. Like, if we just ignore everything I just said. If you can poke one hole in the team, if you can remove the Incineroar early, if you can remove the resist early, just click Astro Barrage and Snowball and you're fine. Like it's it's all over. The the main issue is like it gets stuffed by Wide Guard in many situations. So and because Mudshot isn't really viable in non-Dynamax because you can't max Quake, they have to run Shadow Ball as a single target move. So if your opponent calls a Shadow Ball or calls a Wide Guard or not a Wide Guard or calls um Expanding Force or Astro Barrage, if they can call when you're going to use those moves, it's very easy for them to turn the tide by like just going for a Trick Room because this team has an awful Trick Room matchup in many situations. So yeah, I, I think it's it's not terrible and it's very strong and it's like definitely top tier, but it's not S. I, I can't put it in S like in my own mind. And um, yeah, he's not done. <laughs> I don't really need to explain that, but yeah. I just thought it'd be fun to get my thoughts out uh, now that the format has developed quite a bit. I don't know how much this tier list has changed. I think it's changed a little bit. Um, yeah, like Eveltal definitely rose a bit. Um, Eternatus is in the same spot. I had a lot more I had to say about Ho-Oh now that we've seen that Entei is just a bit better like for the value. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.